Hey, fam. <laughs> Welcome to Transition Tuesday. I'm Lilith Electra. That's Amanda Bonanza. We got a question. We scoured the depths of the internet for your questions. And, uh, you know, just trying to make life a little easier if we can. Make the world a better place. How you doing today? I'm well, thank you very I mean, much. you and I have been talking for like 15 minutes, but this is for the people who are watching. Talking for like an hour. How are things, how are things going? <laughs> you know, got, 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 got little, little things going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm hoping that Timothy Chalamet, I'm going to just send it to him. I want his approval. See, that was, I see that was before, he, the Timothy Chalamet stuff was before the countdown. That was before the countdown. People watching so the no recording one's gonna know what I'm talking Chalamet. about. What do you two are obsessed with, Timothy Chalamet? We do a live show called Being Trans with Lil' the Red every Saturday at noon Pacific, three Eastern, nineteen hundred Universal Time, and you can catch that. You know, it'd be cool if you could have like a, like a like a shirt pocket with like a little a little Timothy Chalamet in it, and whenever you're feeling down, you could just you just hold your hand out, and he'd hop up, and he'd just whisper in your ear, he'd just like. You're doing great. I love just, that. And then you just put him back. It's a pocket Chalamet. Thanks I'm going to buy a 3D printer and just print out a bunch of little. And breathe little life out. into it. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Dr. Frankenstein. I was thinking more like God, but yeah, sure. Dr. Frankenstein, whatever. <laughs> I mean, he had to turn me into a monster. Uh, yeah. All right. So but Wait, I think wait a just... minute. Wait a minute. No, because doctor was doc would you say Dr. Frankenstein was the monster? Was Dr. He... Frankenstein is of course the monster. He's piecing together dead I bodies thought, like, and bring him to I life. I thought the townsfolk were the monster. The monster was the mob. <sighs> wow. Okay. And Dr. Frankenstein was like he was playing God, but I mean he just wanted to create a man. I love you said that and it didn't connect that at all with him being the monster. Well, I mean, I don't see why that's that big a deal. I mean, he did it, and then the guy, well, he didn't treat him very well. To be fair, the only Frankenstein media I'm intimately aware of or familiar with is Young Frankenstein. Yeah, so I might not have the best. Yeah. I might not have the best grasp um, of all of that. I read Frankenstein like in high school, and so it's been a minute. But like, I remember it being good. It's good. I read Young Frankenstein. Yeah, you read the script. <laughs> I read the novelization of the movie. Young Frankenstein. I picked up the, the book. movie, the novel. Yeah, and it's got like a picture of Gene Wilder on it. I'm like, oh, Gene Wilder's great in this book. I love this. Do we have a question today for? I don't. Show? I'm just stalling until I find it. <laughs> you know, you're just looking for questions. I do have a question. I, no, you're look, such I've been a right. I've been right here. I've been right here this whole time. You're so good. Uh, yeah. This. Transphobic propaganda is starting to get to me despite being trans. What can I do? Uh, I'm a young female to male, and when I see transphobic people on the internet, I slowly start to think that they are right to internalize Ooh. their thoughts. I'm obviously not transphobic, but I'm starting to feel ashamed of my identity. Oh my goodness, that's terrible. I pick this just so I could give the advice like, fuck those people. Which is, well, I think I say that, I say that every week. I say that every week. They don't make any sense. Their talking points don't make any sense. What? It's like, the the right wing anti trans talking points all the arguments are garbage they're they're preposterous they're they're clown shoes like they don't know what they're talking about at all, all. Right, so, so I, just I just want to verify I just want to verify what you're saying right now is that the school nurse who when I was in school couldn't give me an aspirin is not performing gender affirming surgeries in school you're saying that's not true. I don't know. They might be doing that in liberal New York or California. Okay. Like, I'm not in school anymore. Who knows what the liberal oh, agenda no. is? But like, but what I will say about it is that propaganda, that nonsense, that noise, it doesn't influence my thinking other than I really don't like those people. And it makes me angry and it makes me sad and it makes me a little scared. But like, I mean, just going through the comments on our show and like having to either choose to respond to these clowns or to just block them out right like it's like it it gets to me like it affects me like in a way that like it's it does psychic damage the propaganda doesn't get in there like i i, I don't know what to tell you well let me see something a little more helpful <laughs> yeah please <laughs> so first of all when you come to when it comes to internet trolls and haters like you know i'm a performer part of me yeah. getting to the place where i can be a performer is realizing that not everyone's always going to like me and my whole goal of existing is and performing isn't to get people to like me it's to do what i want to do and hopefully enough people like that and people do it's kind of cool internet trolls you know those are just those are just uh secret fans who know that uh they love me but they're too ashamed to just admit it to themselves but when it comes to propaganda here's the thing you have your lived experience 
you know what it means to be a trans person. You know what it means to have gender dysphoria. Anyone else who is outside of that realm, who has an opinion on it and is is not doing yeah. research and is not a doctor, who cares? Who cares what your uncle thinks? Who cares what the Facebook meme meme churn out machine in Russia churning out anti-trans memes says? Like, we know that's not true. You don't have to engage with people. Anyone trying to argue on the internet is is coming from a place of bad faith. If they wanted to learn, they have the entirety of the knowledge of the world at their fingertips if they're on a computer. If they wanted to learn something, they could see your side of the story. They don't want to hear your side of the story. They want to antagonize you. So realize that all of that propaganda doesn't come from a place of you know, joining the conversation or presenting knowledge. It's about antagonizing you. You know your truth, and that that at the end of the day, that's it. And you know, medical medical research is on our side. They'll have their one percent of a thing that they read in some you know Eastern Bloc medical journal that that being trans isn't real, and and it wasn't it wasn't uh, peer reviewed, and it's garbage. And they'll they'll lean on that, which is weird. They'll they'll find the one thing that aligns with what they want to believe, and they'll ignore the ninety nine things that are kind of, you know, well-researched and well-funded. Yeah. And so I would say, you know, unplug from those situations. Avoiding the comments is self-care. You know, you don't have to read the comments. You don't have to read the comments on our videos. I think Amanda You should probably... leave a comment on our videos. Uh, yeah, you like should. Not. Leave a comment. Amanda <laughs> probably deletes them before I get to I get to say something mean to people. And I avoid that because, one, I don't need to hear that. I don't really care what anyone thinks. Anyone who has an opinion about me, I really don't give a shit. But second, I'm, I'm a classic gasoline on the fire girl. So I've <laughs> been tempering my, uh, my snapbacky. I wouldn't say rage, but like my, my tongue lash and whatever you want to call that. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's like, I'll, I'll, I'll slap, I'll smack them down verbally. I, like, and yeah, I'll give I them don't... a one four, but like, I've been tempering that. Cause it's like, it's like you say, there's no point in interacting with those people. They're not there to learn. They're disingenuous. I'm a classic smart ass. And if, yeah, if, someone, if someone comes at me, I assume they have a humiliation kink and I'm more than happy to humiliate them. <laughs> You're there to oblige. I'm more than happy to make them look <laughs> like a fool. <laughs> But get to your points. Okay, so a couple yeah. things. So to the propaganda thing, if the propaganda is getting to you, stop paying attention to it. You might be in a situation where you can't avoid it, like if you live with your parents and your parents watch Fox News or something like that. I live with my dad, and my dad blares MSNBC 24 hours a day. He falls asleep to it. It's on all the time. It's horrible for me. I hate it. And, and so that's, much the so that's like much the smugness. corpo leftist part. Like, and they're the ones that are not as bad, but it's still propaganda. And you can hear it. You can feel the propaganda. The tones of their voice are grating. The corpo voice is just like it gets under my skin. It's like nails on a chalkboard. I, I can't stand it. But he's constantly watching that so i have things that i do to escape it i leave i go somewhere else i i put on headphones i distract myself with my media that i want to watch and i understand that you can't always escape it entirely but you can definitely mitigate it especially if it's getting to you and you can sense that it's changing the way you think about yourself or or, or the situation definitely then cut that down because like the thing is is propaganda works like the united states is one of the most propagandized countries in the countries in the world like i mean maybe aside from north korea but like we are bombarded Barded I don't. I don't know what. I don't know yeah. what you're talking about. America is the greatest country in the world. <laughs> See, yeah, and has See? never done anything wrong. One thing that I noticed, just when they back to propaganda. First of all, what age does it become where you have to choose a news channel and have it playing 24 seven? Because I'm getting up there, and I I want to be sure that I avoid that age. It's a generational to... thing. Okay, I think it's generational. Like, like, go, 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 go. If you look at the 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 ratings, the actual ratings, yeah. the average ratings of CNN, the average age of it is like 64. Nine. Meaning, for every 40 year old, there's also a 90 year old watching. <laughs> Like, you know, that's like that's that's the average. So also, like, I think younger ooh. people younger people don't have cable. I don't have cable. I don't have a cable. Right. News that's the watch. thing is yeah. no one no one younger no people like me. Watch those, those media sources once the boot. I don't know what they're gonna do. To be honest with you, I, um, maybe you get old and you start watching cable, but I'm not going to like. And I don't know any, but I'm also like there are shitty Gen Xers out there. So like I don't know. Yeah. But then the other thing I would say is 
Um, and obviously, I'm going to show my age here. Like most of my, like I'm, I love memes. I'm mostly on Facebook. I got, a, I'm in a lot. Like I'm in like, hey, Sopranos, bada bing, meme posting. You know, I, I'm in these things. And every time, like they'll go through these things where someone comes in and there's, he just like posts like 20 transphobic Sopranos memes or memes that have nothing to do with Sopranos. Uh, just to just to cause a hornet's nest in the comments, I just go through. I go to their profile and I block them, and I yeah, never see exactly their shit. I and so every yeah. time I see a every time I see a transphobe on Facebook, I block them. If they're a weird uh, transgender Trump supporter, I'll give them some time. But you know, they you know, if you're a Trump supporter, you're already you're already a lost cause. Like I'm not. Yeah, time. at this point, especially. Like, and then, yeah, uh, still on, most of my you're stuff still on riding that train. Yeah, and then you know the other He's one I use a lot. I use Reddit a lot. You know, Reddit's you can avoid full of trolls and bots, but you can also avoid. You just don't follow, you know, our conservative or you know our the Donald yeah. or whatever it is. You follow our the Donald. Are the Donald. There's something about now. Wait a minute here, because like yeah. something tells me that that actually might be just solid gold in there. It's just it's no, it's like no, it's, it's gonna be it's garbage, bad for your brain. Like, it's bad for your brain. It is. It is. Propaganda is bad for your brain. And back to what I was saying earlier, like Heart. the thing about propaganda is, even if you're aware of it, it still affects you. Like they've been working on that. There was a book. I, I don't know what it was called. I've read it. It, it might've been just called propaganda and it was written in the 1930s. And there was, there was a very specific guy that was a psychologist and he was of the Carl Jungian school. And he was the first guy that brought psychology into advertising and essentially made the unholy blend of what it is now. And, and if you've ever watched Mad Men, they touch on it there. They talk about like how it's thinking like that when Don Draper says he's selling perfume, it's like, we're not selling perfume. We're selling love. We're selling the cure for loneliness. Like that's what we're selling. That's what they do. And it's not just commercials. It's definitely media. It's definitely the news, especially anything corporate and particularly anything right wing. So Fox, One News America, whatever Ben Shapiro, Jordan Peterson's dumbass shit is doing, um, the Daily Wire or the New York Post or Joe Rogan. Don't, like, don't, tell, them, don't tell them where to find this stuff. Well, they, it's out there. It's not hard to find. Because the reason I don't like, like just listening to those places is uh, the New York Times is one of the biggest. Oh, it's terrible. Like they'll have they'll have stories like one last week was Donald Trump can win on his charisma. And uh, I posted one the other week it was the same. It was the same newspaper. And I'm sorry, off the top of my head, I don't know what it was, but it was like one week. Their headline was Joe Biden needs to hot chop out, uh, drop out. And Kamala Harris is the answer. And the next week is like Kamala Harris is not the answer for the Democrat. It was the same writer in the same newspaper. So this is all just bullshit. So so get yeah, rid of your New York bag. Times subscription. I don't care that they have a delicious cake recipe. Fuck the New York Times. You can get a the fine New York Times recipe elsewhere. I can get I can send you a great cake recipe. Yeah. The New York Times yeah. is nothing but anti-trans pro, pro Trump propaganda. In fact, all Poor these places are Poor all people. these places are pro Trump propaganda because people who hate cut Trump are watch taxes. Well, no, they they want people to watch. They want advertisers, and yeah. that's why they'll show Trump have a press conference where he meanders through about bacon and wind, and they'll show it in its entirety, and they'll be like, "How come Kamala Harris is never uh, doing things?" It's like, "Well, she's got a, she's got shit every day. You're just not there filming it because she's not talking like a jackass." I really do think the solution is to just cut down on your media by whatever means you can, and I think that's just a good piece of advice no matter what media you're getting i think when you look at any sort of news because of ratings because of clicks because of views clickbait anything like where you want engagement or people to watch it by its nature has to be sensationalist and so what you're getting is at its best a hyper concentrated dose of all the worst aspects of humanity like like concentrated dose directly on your tongue as opposed to like you know when you walk outside and engage with life and the people like it's never that bad it's never like that yeah sure someone did die in a wells fargo like after and they didn't find her for four days but like 
that's not going on at your bank. <laughs> like, you know, when you go outside and you go to your bank, like that's not the norm. Like we all hear about it. Like we all, oh, that's terrible. And honestly, this is going to shock some people. The world is not on fire. We have work yeah. to do and we need to vote and we need to be part of our representative democracy. But uh, I can pour myself a big glass of lemonade and go sit on my front porch here in the middle of Detroit and say hi to my neighbors and enjoy exactly. life. And sometimes just have to unplug uh, from all of it. I get all of my news, um, much like the kid in the music video uh, from Megadeth Videos. That's where I get I, I that's where I get all my news. <laughs> I, I get a watch, lot of my I, news from Megadeth. I just watch all my I just watch old Megadeth videos. And like there there it is in peace oh, sells. Dad, <laughs> the dad comes in. He's like, I want to watch the news. The kid goes, This is the news, old man. This I'm like, Yeah, this news. is the news. Like, story. This Tell is the Reader's the news. Digest. Yeah, and that's the other place I get my news is Reader's Digest. Uh, I read old Reader's like Digest. Magazine. I just I get from it from the seventies. Yeah. yeah. I go when to. My, I go to. When my mom Robert died, they left me a whole basement full of Reader's Digests, and I just read through them. And I'm like, hmm. I wonder what Gore Vidal has to say this week. <laughs> I mean, I feel good about that question. How about you? I feel good that media. I feel good that all of the audience has no idea what I said in that last two sentences. <laughs> Why are you doing that? Why I didn't talk over you that much. No, I meant they don't know what Reader's Digest is. <laughs> or or Gore Vidal. Like I'm I'm pulling like random random names from the past. Well, okay, so we have I here's the thing about that is I don't care. Like, yeah, we're gonna reference it either. Older but stuff, you should read Gore and Vidal. That's good because like you should know about things. Like, and it's okay if you don't it's okay if you don't get our references but we're gonna reference things because we are we are knowledgeable people and we know about this and that <laughs> so yeah we're older we're gonna give you some but Gorvadal is someone you should know about um yeah you know, I, I would say I, I would say that, but like I would say that Gorvadal has, <laughs> has, has, has the riz as the kids would say he he did at one he point did. I mean he did. He was like a, a one of the first openly gay, um, like Riz. I don't know, media celebrity guys. Like he's 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 cool. He's, you should check him out. Listen to what he has to say about stuff. He has some valid points about a lot of things. Um, I'm gonna be honest. I've never read any Gore Vidal. I just know his name and drop. I've it there. seen him. I've seen him in interviews and and debates and stuff. I don't know that I've read any. I probably have read some Gore Vidal. Like I mean, yeah, he's an author. He's good. That's our show. Cut down on your media. Go outside. Touch grass. But you say it like the rudest way. You're right. Like, that was touch a grass rude. is such a such a rude thing. It's just like find the things you love and just go and enjoy something you love. Exactly. For a while. Be nice to people. Engage with people. I know well, let's not get let's not get crazy here. Because that is hard for some people, but that's a good way to know that the world doesn't hate you. That propaganda that you get, that right wing anti trans nonsense. It's not most people it's a very small minority of people that think and behave like that and of the people that do most of them are cowards and aren't going to say anything to you anyway it's really just a loud noise in media is really the only place it really exists maybe some churches but i don't know i'd say churches or media don't go to church quit quit your church <laughs> quit your church quit your church get out quit of there church. who needs you know where i get my anyway. church you know where i get Not my church me. old mega death videos that's where mega my, death church, is my is. church i get all my news i get oh, all my church from mega death videos <laughs> i need the church of dave mustaine the church of fucking rock that's what i'm talking about you know who's going to be in the detroit area on september 14th Oh, fucking tell me it's Dave Mustaine so I can fly it's to Detroit. Megadeth. Oh, shit. <laughs> Maybe I have to go to Detroit and see Megadeth. Megadeth. I don't think it's a stretch to say that in my personal opinion. Dave Mustaine might be the funniest man alive. I don't think he means to be. But <laughs> if, you can, if you can listen to the album Symphony of Destruction start to finish and not crack up, like I don't know who you are or what kind, what That's kind of person album. you are. What, it it is a great album, but it's also yeah. hilarious. It's the it, you'll be. I was. I'll laugh in the first five, ten seconds of that album because it's hilarious. He does open with a knock knock joke. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> knock 
snack. Right. Who's there? It's the mental person in your mind. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I just my <laughs> Dave Mustaine the impersonation. Is too good. Destruction Mega Too enjoy. good. I gotta stop that. Where'd that come from? <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh thank you very much for uh Watching the uh, uh, Transition Tuesday. Oh, you got some more to say about it. No, I was going to say, uh, if you want to give them the email or leave out. I want to do, I got a whole, question. I got a whole you thing. You got a whole thing. I'm going to let you, I'm going to have a sip of water and let you, you take do a sip of thing. water. I want to tell you that you can support the transverse by going to patreon.com slash the transverse and get access to exclusive content. Get yourself some transverse and being trans swag at the transverse.etsy.com. Ask us a question. If you want to get your questions here on Transition Tuesday, you can either leave a comment in the comment section. We love that. You can DM either Lilith Electra or myself, Amanda Bonanza, on the Trans Section Discord server. Or uh, you can email, if you want to go old school, to media at thetransverse.net. That's it. Lilith, you've got a show coming up, don't you? I got a show like in October. I'll be in upstate New York at the Uptown Improv Festival in um, Utica. And uh, excited to be doing that. It's like Friday, the, Friday, October 11th at 9.45 p.m. So after hours. <laughs> oh, Lilith after dark. That's a good, that's yeah. a good hour. Yeah, I'll, I'll have my bongo drums time. by then. It's going to be great. And then, uh, the you know, drum. if you see me on the road, come out and say, so, come out and say, hey. I'll say hey back. Someone in uh in the uh in the YouTube chat just put sweating bullets and I'm just Oh like, yeah. It's someone classic. gets it. Someone gets it. Not enough people perform that song at karaoke. You want a karaoke banger? Sweating yeah. bullets, baby. <laughs> when I was in Tampa, uh some one of the performers had their grandmother and a friend show up with older women, and the one old lady comes up to me after the show, she's just like you you have charisma. That's the only note I got. And That's I all you like, need. I do have charisma. <laughs> She's just <laughs> chomping on a cigar like, you got, you got charisma, it. kid. You when got you're, it. Hey, one year, one year I had an older guy come up to me. He's like, your secret is you're mean to the audience, but they love you, so it doesn't matter. And I was like, yeah, that is that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's, quite, <laughs> that's a very German take. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching Transition Tuesday. Uh, we'll see you next week.